Uh, Director Craninger, it is estimated that debt collectors contact consumers over a billion times a year, a billion. We need solutions at scale to address this problem. Millions of Americans find themselves behind on one bill, then two, then three, and usually because of a disruptive life event, a death, illness, being laid off, or predatory loans. And before they know it, they are debt trapped. CFPB's proposed debt collection rule falls short of anything. An agency with consumer protection in its name should feel comfortable offering. Director Craniger, there has been quite a bit of correspondence between my office uh, and yours, so I'm appreciative of the opportunity to follow up on that correspondence in person. As you are well aware, uh, Chairwoman Waters, Representative Por Porter, and myself wrote a letter outlining our many concerns about your proposal. This proposed rule would allow debt collectors and collection attorneys to attempt to collect old, expired debt decline to translate important notices, and claim a safe harbor from liability if they make false, deceptive, or misleading statements in court filings, among other things. Director Craniger, yes or no? Under your proposed rule, are consumers required to affirmatively consent to being contacted by debt collectors via text or email message? Do they have to affirmatively consent, yes or no? That structure of consent is provided by virtue of the fact that they it's have a simple question with creditors using those modes of communication. So there is a limitation on uh, the way that they can be communicated with via email or text. And I will also note, uh, Congresswoman, that this is a proposal. I think the, the interest that we have is to set some bright line rules where we can. We knew that there would be much feedback on this. We asked 162 questions in that, in that proposed rule to get we're, the we're feedback. We're climbing my time. I, I appreciate Thank that. You. Let me just get on to my question. So one more time, yes or no? Do consumers have to affirmatively consent? Uh, in the in prior process, they, they probably Okay, I'm going to move on. To be clear, under your rule, a consumer does not give a debt collector permission to contact them via text or messages before the messages start. Is that correct, yes or no? Again, because they use that as a prior mode of communication, and they can unsubscribe right, at any time. point. They can opt out, but they are in this before they're even aware that they're in it. They can opt out, but they're not affirmatively consenting to be contacted in this way. That is the fact. I've always believed that people closest to the pain should be closest to the power, driving and informing the policy making, and it just feels to me that that is not the case here. So as a consumer, Director Craniger, what kind of phone plan do you have? Do you have unlimited texting, yes or no? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, so without an unlimited plan, the cost of sending and receiving SMS text messages can range from 10 to 30 cents per text, costs that can quickly add up for those without an unlimited plan. So yes or no, under your proposed rule, would, you, would collectors be allowed to send consumers an unlimited number of text messages? Only under certain circumstances. I imagine someone without an yes unlimited no. plan would not provide their number for any okay, be claiming my time. Would the collectors pay for the cost? Would the collectors pay for the cost associated with these texts? Yes or no? Uh, it, to the extent that there is a charge, uh, the consumer would be charged under the scenario that you're painting. Right. The consumer would be charged. So again, that is not consumer protection. Consistent with their Let's say that I'm they a, have with their provider. I, I, I want to bring into this space the one the consumers who have been contacted, harassed one billion times, and often for debt that they didn't even incur. So let's say I'm a consumer with a prepaid or limited phone plan, and each text costs me 20 cents to receive. As a result of some medical event or other disruptive life event that happens to everyone, because hardship does not discriminate. I now have four debts in collection, and each collector texts me five times a day. This happens. So at 20 cents a text, I would have to pay an additional $120 a month so that is over $1,400 a year for people who are already struggling to make ends meet and to pay these debts, even but if they the rightfully rule, incurred them. Subscribe, so they'd pay a dollar. Actually, you said four debts, so we're talking about 80 cents. Reclaiming my time. So 
That is why I introduced the Monitoring and Curbing Abusive Debt Collections Practices Act, which will prohibit the issuance of any rule that would allow for this type of consumer harassment. When debt despair is on the rise and debt collection is the second most complained about issue for your agency, this proposed rule is simply unacceptable. Thank you, and I yield.